Framer is by far the best, the easiest way to make money as a web designer. This video is with the intention that you're signing web design clients, you know, for multiple thousands of dollars. There is also ways you can make money with templates, selling components. I'm not really going to go into that uh, in this video though, more targeted to web design agency owners. I'm in no way at all making money, getting sponsored or any commissions or affiliates for supporting Framer. I've used multiple web web developers and this is what I use, this is what I recommend to my friends, anyone even getting started as a beginner. There is a slightly steeper learning curve to, to get into it. It looks a little bit overwhelming at the start, but that's what this video is. There's a lot of very professional and uh, very too in-depth videos showing you how to use Framer and they're great at all, great and all. Not, saying they're, not saying they're rubbish, but I wanted to make kind of just a, an easy to understand, kind of unserious video showing you, all right, here's Framer. This is all you really need to know if you're selling websites, um, starting off just using templates in your industry and then how you kind of use the different controls to put in the different inputs and stuff you need to do mock-ups and sell websites to your web design agency clients. So here's Framer, we're on the screen right now. I always just start off on the marketplace, all right? There is free and there is paid templates. You can always obviously start off with the free ones, they are absolutely amazing. The paid ones, um, the paid ones are usually fairly cheap and they're even like a hundred times better, but we're just gonna stick to the um, stick to the uh, the free ones right now. So let's find, you can here, you can toggle it to free. Let's just find a template just for the sake of the video that we're gonna be working off. Um, this one doesn't seem too bad. And I'm just gonna show you, yeah, this will do. So you can go and you can search for like any industry, any contractor, plumbing. It's got a bunch of sections and it's categorized as well. Um, you can go and you can preview it first. Um, look, and you can say, awesome, this is fantastic. You can even open the link in like mobile, see how it's all optimized. But look, say you were selling selling to a roofer business, instead of using Reloom or those cool AI tools that in a few minutes can generate a website, they are absolutely incredible, super easy, but you do not get the kind of quality like a, like a site like this and all of the pages already built out. So I'm gonna show you exactly how we would then go in and customize it, use all of the controls, making it super, super simple for beginners if you've never used Framer before. Again, this is just gonna be an unserious, just follow along, simple terms, all right? Click use for free. Obviously you need a free Framer account. It's gonna copy the project to your account. Um, same thing with paid templates, you buy it once. It's not like Shopify where you're spending hundreds and you can only use it like per site, whatever. You can use it as many times as you want. It just gives you a link. Um, all right, boom, here we go. So it's gonna open up inside the editor. I'll give you a quick uh, crash course on how this whole editor works because it can look a little bit overwhelming at the start. Um, you can zoom out and in. Usually you're gonna have just the, sometimes it's more, but usually you've got like three different screens. So here's the desktop, here's the tablet, here's the mobile. You can even go in, click that little plus button and you can see the preview and you can go between, all right, this is how it looks on all these different, um, all these different screen sizes. Usually whatever happens on the desktop, you're editing from the desktop, it will always kind of convert down to tablet and phone. But as, as you finish the site, you always got to go through, go through and you might need to like slightly change the alignment, stuff like that. But overall, it's really good. It's not like weeks or other stuff where it's just pasted on. You have to basically build a whole new site. Reason being, it all works in layers, all right? You'll see on the left-hand side here, you've got the pages. So you can go to the home, the about us, the services, um, all the sub service pages, contact us. I'll show you how we set up the forms, everything like that, all right? Um, but it's not like an exactly drag and drop, it all works in layers. So we have the top layer here, so we're working off the desktop. Um, so we have like a hero section. So it's like, think of it like each kind of section is a box, and then it's got a bunch of other little boxes inside of it. So the hero section, this is one big box. Um, we'll have a, a kind of a layer for the background. We'll have a container. So there's different terms like containers, frames, so obviously it's called framer. Um, keeping it simple though. So see how we have this box. Inside of this box, we have another box. So this box is the top half. Inside this box, we have the top title, the bottom title. You see what I mean? This is another box inside the box. So that's how it kind of is so easy to then be optimized down to the lower... Uh, lower fucking pages and whatnot. So going through, say we want to change some text. Most of it's like pretty. What's going on there? Most of it's pretty easy to change. You simply have to click on a layer. Whatever you click on, it'll usually open up. But for sometimes, if you click, you might click here, and you're clicking on the box. But yeah, we're going to make sure you click on the actual text box. So most of the time, you can just double click and you can just type and you can change whatever you want. Obviously, you can always Command Z to go back, or you can use these right hand side controls down here. So you can just like click on here, and if you got like if you watch my AI copywriting video, if you want to paste stuff, you can easily Command V, paste it in there. Um, 
So I'm not going to show exactly how, all right, we're going to change it and make it customized. I've got a separate video on that. This is more, all right, Crash Course and actual framer and how we use and stuff. Um, not so much maybe on this template. It's fairly simple with colors, but um, a lot of templates you'll notice have like a main color theme that goes throughout the page. Say you're using an industry, but like it's a kind of different to the business mock-up you're trying to do for the client. Instead of going through every single element and changing the color, by the way, how you do that, you literally say we want to change the background, you click on it. Um, so this is the component, so it's a bit different. I'll use say uh, this for example, maybe, is that a component? Yeah, so see here, we can click fill and you can just use any color you want, all right? Um, you can remove that fill. Uh, usually you'd go over to the assets again every kind of template is a bit different but I hate starting from scratch always use some sort of template and I'll also show you how you use multiple different templates and components and put it together you can click on assets all right you can go down to color and you can see the colors they use so this is a primary color we can change this to like red and you'll see where all these colors are used throughout the side it will kind of change it um, and yeah fair, fairly simple all right I'm not gonna go too in depth in, in that um, went through layers, so usually CMS, all right? This is where I get a lot of questions with, oh, how does the CMS work? Say you wanna change these services, all right? See, we've got a page here called services and there's a drop down. there's an actual like each sub page, all right? Reason being, if you have multiple pages, you don't have to make a new page for every single service. For example, we've got the structure here, how each service page is gonna look. We don't need to then duplicate it and then put all the information in. Not only is that a waste of time, but it also makes it a lot harder for the client. When you're transferring the site over, this can be for services, this can be for a portfolio, CMS can be used for a bunch of different things, all right? Instead, what we're gonna do is you'll see in our CMS up here, it's already pre-built, we've got services, all right? And we can go in, we can add, we can remove, but we've already got this um, kind of template and you can always customize and make your own CMS. So we can change what this says on here. I'll say test. The slug is like the URL, so what it says after. You can upload and easily change the picture. You can change all the titles and descriptions and stuff like that. And then when you go onto the actual, um, see, it automatically updates, all right? So your clients can go in, do some CMS changes if they want to swap around their portfolio, add some new stuff. They hit publish and it's automatically going to publish, all right? So that's super cool. That's 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 actually really cool, actually. Um, super easy to use with stuff like that. Um, I'll show you quickly with the buttons and stuff, or all the forms and whatnot. So usually you'll have a contact form. A lot of people get confused with this. So say you're using like Wix or other stuff, usually once you transfer the site over, and I'll show you how you do the transferring ownership stuff, usually when you transfer over the site, they log into like the Wix app and they always get notified through the apps. Here it's a little bit different. So we have a form here. You can of course like duplicate and add more different like questions and stuff in here. Um, but if you click on the main form layer, again, remember on the layers here, we got the different layers or the boxes inside the box. If you click on the form, on the right hand side where we always work with our controls, you'll see a send to button. So you can set this up for your client. Sometimes when you transfer it, it could, that's the one problem I've ran into, they may have to set it up again. Um, but anyway, you click send to. What I usually do is I do uh, email. So I'll click on email. Um, and then all you have to do is you can put in your, your client's email, you can just say you've received new site submission and boom, what that's going to do is every time someone submits on the live site, once I've upgraded, of course, and got the domain set up, once someone submits a form, it will automatically go to the email, all right? I guess you could also set up different automations of different stuff with the options here um, to make it go to like a, some sort of different thing. I also like doing a Google Sheet. So you click on Google Sheets and all you have to do is connect it to um, your client's Google account. It's easy for them to do that. They just log in. It will automatically create a new sheet where every form will also go into there. So instead of going through the emails, they can always go in and they can see that um, Ducal sheet right there. Um, pretty cool. I'll show you how these different components work. So you'll notice that some text things on different templates aren't as easy as, all right, just click and change the text. You might have to, for example, it could be a CMS. So you have to go always check the CMS and change it in here. Or it could be something like, something like uh, this. So see how I clicked on this box? I don't know, usually that works. So yeah, you've clicked on this box, you can change the text. Um, but sometimes, for example, it's like a component type thing. So if I want to change how this one looks, it'll happen to all of them. Reason being, you sometimes click on it and see, that I really, I made that sound really confusing then. It's probably not the best example. Um, such as, 
What's a, what's a good one? Say, such as the reviews, all right? You might want the review box to look a little bit different. So like, oh, well, I've only got the input options here. How do I actually change the, the color? You can either hit edit component or double click. And then what you're gonna do is you've got the testimonial card here. So this is for every single one of those boxes that shows up. So then you can go, this will look shit, but for example, red. When you go back to the homepage, you'll see that it'll happen for every single component. So just like, that's like one of the kind of uh, confusing things with frame a house a little bit different. Um, but not trying to confuse you too much. Now, next one. This can kind of relate to all different, um, all different kind of embeds with different softwares. But Framer, a lot of people get confused with this. So you may come from Wix or some platform where you're used to like up just uploading a video, no matter what the size. You upload a video to the site and paste it on. Never upload a video because it can affect the site speed or the SEO and stuff. You always want to embed the video. You can use YouTube, you can use Vimeo. I use Vimeo for all my clients. I just got to pay like 25 bucks a month, got like 100 gigs and I just host it all on there. Um, what you can do is you can either make your custom a custom component and make it look all customized. You don't have the Vimeo YouTube controls. Uh, on my recent AI, uh, yeah, AI video, I showed you how I do that. Or you can simply come up here and search Vimeo and you'll see you have a bunch of options you can search for um, YouTube um, or, or different shit. And here you can also add in other cool stuff, forms, images, um, stuff like that. But you can simply uh, put this layer work in here. No, I'll paste it somewhere else. Uh, let's just go, let's just do it in, in here. And I'll remove all this shit. Da, 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 da. All right, here we go. Insert Vimeo. All right, so you can still kind of do some drag and drop stuff. Um, you can paste a link in there. You can edit like the controls if you want it to autoplay, loop, mute. You can hide the controls, but sometimes there's autoplay problems on um, desktop. And you see here, it always kind of pastes it, but you might have to do just a little bit of tweaking just to make sure it fits correctly. Um, won't go too in depth into what all the sizes and stuff means. And a quick tip, guys. This is the biggest tip for anything you're doing in web design frame or whatever. If you're stuck on stuff, for example, I might be trying to like trying to get into this and I'm not able to change the text. There's a problem going on um, on a Mac. Command Shift 3, just screenshot the entire screen, all right? Go into AI, explain what you're doing. I'm using Frame, I'm trying to do this. I can't find this option. The amount of times I've been stuck on something where I can't find the answer on like Google or YouTube, I literally use ChatGPT and I give it a question. I'm explaining what I'm trying to do. Um, if I'm trying to do a code component, as I'm learning and still to this day trying to do kind of more advanced stuff on Framer and I'm stuck and trying to do something that's like a little bit confusing um, or I don't know how to explain it to like a certain YouTube video or relate it to me, what I'm trying to do, AI will literally step by step in the most simplest way troubleshoot you through it. It could be like a sizing issue, which is why something's not working or not showing up. Um, AI is like just easily the... <laughs> the, e the easiest thing to do, all right? Here's actually an example. So the header and the footer, obviously that's going to show on every page. So you might click on this and go, oh, fuck, well, where's my controls? This is what I mean where you double click and you kind of go into that component. So you see you've got the header and footer here. So I'll double click on the header and then here I can actually select. Same thing with buttons. You can like select the pages, different links. You can put in NRLs. You can change what it says, all right? Um, you can change all this shit. You can upload your logos, all right? Um, we can go into the footer. Again, you can change it here and it's going to go onto, onto every single single page, all right? So if you look now, boom, that uploads it on there, updates it, go into the about page, that's always gonna be updated. Same with that footer here, all right? Um, so really nothing too confusing. When it's time to transfer ownership, okay? I'll show you the bit of the back end first. So you've got your settings here. So this is the bit of the back end. You've got your general. So here you can do your um, the business name. I've showed you how we use AI um, to do kind of all the copywriting and stuff, but basically, um, after you've got all of your information from your project brief form and you know what we're doing, you can just prompt it to say, okay, I'm doing all the backend SEO now. Um, this is a bit different to the on-page um, SEO. I'll show you how you do that in a moment, but give me a um, site description. Give me all the uh, page titles and the um, site page descriptions, whatever. Paste it in here, go into the about page. So obviously, hit save first. Go into the about page, it'd be like about business like there's all seo things you can paste a, a line or two on the um on the business stuff and all this other different shit all right you can also update on general on general you can go and you can uh, update like their logo and the social preview on here so you can tell it's not templated obviously you always hit save and publish uh you'll actually get like a base domain at the start um, and then obviously they need to update their plan first. I'll show you how you transfer, but they need to update their plan. 
Most of the time, it's the personal uh, basic plan, monthly or yearly. This is perfect. This one, you only get the home and 404 page. So usually, it's this one you need. You get two CMS collections, so enough to work with as well. Um, but I always prompt my clients to use this one. And then obviously, in the domain, you can work them through connecting the uh, the custom domain through here, all right? Once they upgrade it. Um, how do they actually get the site? Firstly, you tell them to make a framer account. And all you have to do is go up to like file, whatever this button is down here. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, file and then here transfer project. So you can click that. You just put in the email. You can keep yourself as an editor if you like, and then you can transfer. Um, if you've done it through like an invite way that you can always like invite and give full permissions, whatever. There's a few different ways. I always just transfer it. Um, and then they can obviously invite you or you keep yourself as an editor. If you're doing recurring edits, I have to go back in and do some stuff. Um, what else? That's, that's simply it, guys. Honestly, the best way to learn, you can watch all these videos and take it in, but the best way to just get in, it's free, and just learn how to use it, all right? Um, I promise you, it is, um, you know, it might take you 10, 15 minutes to do a mock-up instead of a couple minutes of AI, but man, I'm telling you, these websites, like, look how high converting and just incredible these websites are and all the animations when you're doing your free mock-ups for clients to try and sell them on your web design services, and, of course, actually doing actually doing all of the um the fucking design and development and service delivery and whatnot. It's just incredible. So look, I'll show you, I'll go back to I'll just search up framer templates. And look, you've got heaps here. So you can go into different uh, different templates and you can like copy, remember the layers, you can just click on the layer, like a section, copy it, go into a new template, paste it, and then like configure it, fonts and whatnot, uh, if you like certain elements. So these are the paid versions. The paid versions technically you can also use, um, so you're not out of pocket, you can use it as a mock-up. Obviously you won't have as much control. You can, ch <clears throat> you can change the text. So I can just go in here and I can just inspect element this. Um, so obviously this is $50 actually buy and edit it, but I can just inspect element away that. If I want to put, usually it's an image, it might be a bit hard to change the logo, um, but you can like go in here and you can change like, depending on what type of uh, content it is. So you can change like the, the wording around here. So you can, there's ways to get around it. Um, and then look, look, this is like a paid template, but look how sick this is, all right? And usually have so many pages to work with. Um, and you can really tell the difference from the free and paid. There's also components. So you've got components here. So you can go in and you can also use AI to code your own ones, but certain like cool stuff if you want to implement into your templates, um, stuff like this. Just a bunch of UI stuff, even not through Framer. There's a bunch of sites that have like free UI components. See, cool little animation button. This is why I love Framer. There is so many free, just free shit you can do. It's just really incredible, all right? So this is a, again, I think I titled it Framer for Dummies. Once you watch this video and play around with it a little bit, you'll really understand that this is actually really easy to use. If you're overwhelmed, I was in your shoes, man. I was like, oh man, I'm not a proper web designer. I've just been selling Wix websites. Who am I to use Frame? I'm telling you, you spend a few days and just actually learning it, watching videos, getting in, playing around with templates, um, and just playing around with it. And man, you will learn it easy. You'll run into problems. Like my biggest problems were like with the components and the sizing. Once I used AI and just figured some shit out, I realized how easy it was. Um, and man, that's it. Every project's different, obviously. You have different like animations and stuff to work with. Sometimes there might be elements you want to change the color, but it's actually an image. So you just have to screenshot the image, go into Canva, change the colors. Like, you know, a bit of backend stuff sometimes to do. Um, I had some notes here of stuff to go over and it looks like that's pretty much it. If you have any other questions, of course, just join the community link in the description and you'll be able to ask me and people in there whatever you want. Uh, follow the Instagram at Cameron Jeans and also my agency Instagram at Next Up Web Design if you would like a little bit of inspiration on what to post for your own web design agency if you're trying to get more calls booked with social proof. But yeah, this is Framer. Again, Framer.com. I'm not getting paid to make this video. I just love it. I think it's a great way. My uh, agency website was actually built with Framer. I use it for all service delivery. Um, again, you don't have to just pick a template and then all right, change logos, pictures, and sell that. Of course you can, but you can, it's so easy to make it customized. All right? Use a few different templates, what you like. It's always great to start off in the same industry because the photos and input and content's easy to build off. Use AI to do all the copywriting, <coughs> help you with sections, and that's it. Go make some money.